Well, good April to everybody. Welcome to the April uh, version of the software update. Uh, you'll say, you'll note it says January. Well, that I think was the last time we did uh, one of the official updates. So anyway, this is for the April version and we'll be learning about what's new. I do wanna make a couple of shout outs right at the beginning. We'll do it again at the end here but that uh, we want to remind people that if we've got the April users webinar is coming up on the Ides of April, uh, the radical report sessions, report functions, session two. Um, if you missed session one, you can go view the uh, webinar and jump right into this one. So we we'll want to make sure you um, have that on your calendar. And as well, there is still space on the Student Manager Bootcamp. It is virtual this year, so you just need to lock that time out on your calendar. Um, and uh, the registration information on that is on the website under events. So uh, Matthew is going to start us off with all things good about what's new in Student Manager. And I'm going to make him the presenter. You ready, Matthew? Yes, no. Here you go. Yes, no. Here you go. <laughs> Sending it to you <laughs> now. So there you are. Okay. Um, yes. So Monday we did release 98, uh, but I'm going to uh, show things from uh, 96, 97, and 98 uh, today uh, as far as the new features. Uh, quite a few bug fixes over the last few months as well so uh definitely um if for any other reason you you do want to update for that kind of stuff so uh but here here's the goodies come on okay table tents uh this is from uh when running within quick reports from the course screen uh previously it would just run for all of them uh, but as you may know from the other quick report areas, it has this question about whether you want to do all names, scope by the registration date, or select specific names. And somebody thought it would be a good idea to also have that for table tents. I agreed, and it took all of 10 seconds to, to copy and paste this into that section. So, yeah, got it done. Uh, next one, emailing the link to pay outstanding. This is a relatively new um, option we've had on uh, the the name screen. Um, I want to say around six months we've we've had this, but uh, the one thing it didn't have was, or actually no, it's been longer than that. But anyway, uh, the new thing with that is uh, the signature option uh, in your user profile is now also respected in this area. So if you do have that turned on, it then asks when you click the email link to pay outstanding uh, if you would like to include your signature. So uh, email templates. We've rewritten the book kind of on this. Uh, your existing templates will still work, so don't worry that you have to convert all of your templates to a new way, a new style of things. You don't have to worry about that. This is going forward. If you hopefully find this to be an easier route of writing email templates, then, uh, then I would definitely suggest starting to do this template. And what I've done is worked from kind of what the ACE web has been doing with email templates. And that is you you write your your you know your email or even your HTML code for the email. Um, you write it like you you would normally and then anytime you want to include code from student manager you surround it with this hashtag hashtag or pound pound which whichever way you want to call that uh so pound pound whatever uh and then end it with a pound pound to to uh to get student manager 
to uh, recognize that that's code that it needs to replace in your template. Um, so like I've got the example here, pound pound co-course NM pound pound. So that would get replaced with the course title from within Student Manager when you're when you're sending this template. Uh, what's great about this is you do not have to have quotes around everything and you know uh, doing the different literals. You know the the previous was you'd have to have you know whatever was was a literal in quotes plus whatever code plus you know the next literal and if you missed one quotation mark in there you were searching for days contacting your technician who probably also would miss that you're missing a quotation mark who would then get it over to me and I would sit there looking at it for hours trying to find that one missing quotation mark so we're moving away from that straight oh, text. one note Matthew and jumping yeah. in this Chuck uh, if you go to the help guide and search for email templates, you're going to see that's already been updated in help. And there's an example there. So you'll be able to go to the help guide and get uh, the updated info on that. So you're, you're stealing my thunder. I mean, I, I was just going to get to that. And also, I just wrote uh, the newsletter article last month, which is now in our archive on uh, on aceware.com. Um, I did write a little article with that stuff, but Cheryl's help page, I mean, it has a lot of information there. So uh, you can look at that. Uh, as an example, I've got here, this is a screenshot from uh, an e email template that um, uh, I've been playing with uh, when, when doing this. Um, so yeah. You can see they're much simpler looking, uh, not having quotation marks all over the place uh, to get everything put in there. So anyway, check out the help guide um, and, and hopefully you'll get the gist of what's going on there. And I think we're going to plan on doing a uh, more in-depth session on how to write those uh, emails, I think further down the road, uh, maybe even a conference session. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, the next thing was min enrollment uh, met to teach. This is also a newer feature. Um, it now logs to CRM. Uh, those of you that have CRM, uh, that way you can you can at least have a log of when that email is generated. That way, when the teacher says, "Oh, I never got an email saying that the minimum enrollment was met," you can go and look. And, and verify, yes, you did get it on such and such date. So um, anyway, it's kind of a tattletale type thing there, but anyway, at least gives you a peace of mind that that this uh, this feature was working uh, for that instructor. Uh, AceWeb uh, 63 is also going to log to CRM as well, so. Now who's stealing thunder? Yeah, I'm sorry, Jason, but. <laughs> But I did both, so I mean, it is my own thunder this there. Is true. Okay, so type uh, on the uh, courses taught. Um, uh, so this is on the instructor record. Uh, it shows if if the instru you know for the spe specific course, if they were the instructor of record or if they're in the instructor or whatever else you've got them in as type for it uh, now shows on that uh, that screen. And it's one of it's the screen where you can move things around and it'll remember uh, where you want to put it. So if you want to move that closer to other things or uh, keep it at the end, uh, which, whichever your preference is. A nice time function. So this is uh, a, an update to that, fu that function. We're adding a new parameter to it. And that's uh, to keep the the colon zero zero on times. Right now, it just it strips it, so one p.m. instead of one colon zero zero p.m. Um, you know, keep things a little s smaller. But it, for those of you that want to keep it consistent, you know, because you've got 
you know, maybe you have a listing of courses and you've got 1 p.m., 1.30, 1.45, and you want that the, the, the spacing to all kind of line up, um, you'll, you'll want this fourth parameter. So, uh, proxy reg, this is, uh, this actually also ties into ACE web and this is a, a um, checkbox in Student Manager that allows the proxy reg firm feature. And Jason, I'm sure we'll talk more about that when, uh, when he gets there. So I'm not gonna steal too much of his thunder there. So, uh, remember me on this computer. Okay, so this is, um, kind of a shortcut to get into Student Manager, if you will. Uh, you don't have to type in your username and password every time with this feature. You do need to type in your username, check mark that the remember me on this computer because it is gonna check to make sure you're at least a valid user before you can check mark remember me on this computer. And then you do have to put in your correct password because uh, it is going to verify, you know, it is gonna log you in before it uh, remembers you. And this is on your computer, on your Windows login. So it is it's, it is secure to your Windows login. So two people that share, to share a computer, um, you're not, uh, they're not both going into the same student manager login. It is, it is separated. Uh, we are storing your username and password encrypted in within the Windows login. Um, and that's that's kind of the magic behind this is that it is, uh, you know, it, it is verifying you each time. Um, and I'll get into why we're, we're storing password, but it is also encrypted in a different way than it is encrypted in your 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 security file in your security table so it's it's yeah you're you're not going to be able to hack it or if you can um let me know because wow you're you're better than i am okay well, matthew matthew on once they remembered themselves they don't even get the login screen from then on is that right right um yeah, it, it just logs you straight in um, and and saves you a few seconds. It really helps me in testing student manager because it's, you know, it's a few less steps of, of logging in each and every time. Um, but anyway, for, for you guys, I'm sure it's not that big of a time saver, but it is, you know, a little bit more helpful. Um, I already talked about you have to authenticate before, yeah, you have to have the right password before it will store it. Uh, if you launch Student Manager twice, uh, it's not gonna let you in on the same login twice. So it's gonna let you in with your, whatever login you've stored, and um, then it'll bring in the second time, it will show the login screen. So if you've got two different usernames and passwords to Student Manager, for whatever reason, um, you can bring up Student Manager a second time and, and put in a second password. Uh, it also helps your technician, um, you know, when if, if they need to go in with the uh, backdoor username and password, um, th they can do a subsequent launch to, to still log in with, with, that, with those master credentials. Um, Ways to break out of the remember me is if your password is changed or your username is deleted in, pace, in password maintenance, then the login screen is going to come up for you. And well, I'm, you either have to have provide the new password and do the remember me again, or if you've been deleted out of password maintenance, then you can't log in with that same login. So there are you know, remote ways to stop people from, from remember me. Um, so yeah, and also anytime that the password changes, you do have to do 
Remember Me again. Uh, also with Remember Me, um, if your institution has a policy where they don't like passwords stored, even though we're doing it encrypted, we're doing it on Windows login, uh, but they have you know some some password or you know some policy um, per, that prevents this, get with your technician. Uh, they can turn this off. I do want to be clear though that this 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 remember me stuff it can't be hacked. I'm 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 pretty confident that it cannot be hacked. Now, if someone hacks into your Windows login and launches Student Manager, I can see that happening. Uh, however, if you've got people hacking into your Windows login, you've got bigger issues than them getting into Student Manager. But uh, anyway, that's I know another layer of security. Uh, if your institution does force you to have that extra layer of security, get with your technician. Uh, we can turn this feature off for the entire institution. Even for those people that have already done the remember me on this computer, um, once once the technician turns it off, um, it will force people to log in again. Uh, workshops. Uh, so uh, Sharon was doing stuff for conference and we use Student Manager in-house to, to uh, keep track of uh, conference stuff and she was uh, trying to you know work with a workshop and and see what the catalog information was uh, directly from the catalog screen and she was like there's no easy way to do it so I was like okay well I'll just put this little edit button here on the catalog description window and that way she could go in and and do that so everybody can thank Sharon for this idea because this this is all her fault. Um, anyway, another one of those that took 10 seconds to do. So, uh, deactivating teachers. So this is with the mass faculty field update uh, um, feature. Uh, you can go in. Um, we were we were talking about this uh, in house about how how to deactivate uh, people that took old courses and then you know or teachers that taught old courses but weren't teaching anything new and we were like well you can deactivate all the teachers teaching old courses and then go back through and reactivate everybody teaching newer courses which is two separate steps i was like well why do we have two steps when I can just throw in a check mark box on the screen and we can do it all in one step. So I've got here in this example teaching courses between 0101 1901, which is way before computers even, but uh, up until December 31st, 2017. And then don't deactivate people if they are teaching newer courses. So it's looking at January 1, 2018, up till now, or well, even into the future, of if they're teaching any courses in in beyond that period, it'll keep them active. So hopefully, you guys will find that a little more useful. Uh, uh, Matthew, got yeah. a question. Uh, one of the uh, attendees is asking if you have updated to like 96 or 97, when do we know? And but you missed the last uh, software update session. When are you doing these kind of chronologically? And, and like when do you go from 96 to 97 and 96, 97 to 98? Can you kind of give us a general? Yeah. Uh, here is when you start. Yeah, I I, I don't keep these in real order because it's it's i kind of keep them order in, in, by with, group so yeah the point is uh, that it's a reminder if you upgrade it already and if you want to go for sure go to the forum and check the software updates that would give the the times of when those went in would that be correct yeah yeah, yeah. there weren't there weren't too many items in i want to say 97 and most of these are 
98. So oh, they are okay. Yeah, definitely, definitely get on 98 because um, so, it sounds it's, good. Sounds good. Good idea. Uh, next thing is dead dump function. Um, the whole purpose of dead dump was to uh, be able to save the cursor to Excel, except it doesn't automatically do that. It, it's you got to do it just after and and have the copy to XLS function. So it's like, well, let's have the dead dump function automatically do that. So we added a third and fourth parameter. Uh, so besides it automatically now ask or you know asking you where you want to save uh, the Excel file. Um, it also allows for parameters to, to instead of inputting the location each time, uh, you can have a set location uh, already passed to it. Or if you don't want Excel, you can, uh, or I should say the old format Excel, you want the newer Excel or CSV or, or any other copy to XLS formats, XML, uh, DBF, whatever. Uh, you can pass that in the fourth parameter uh, to do that. Uh, teacher was, uh, I'm blanking on what teacher was actually does. Um, um, teacher so was as a way, if you have used um, find int, it's basically a way to query a report by the teacher who was a, the teacher of record on a class. So there aren't many reports in the system other than under instructor that allow you to say, I only want to see students or registrations from teacher blah, blah. Uh, using the teacher was allows you to do that. So it's one, and again, that's and why you, you need to sign up for the functions up the advertisement for the April 15th function session. We're going to go into it on that time. So good. Uh, yeah, and you could do up to 25 instructors with it. Uh, so it was it, it keeps bringing up that same dialog box. Um, and before the cancel button would just continue on through the routine. Now I have it so that the cancel button exits. Um, also that the the each time that the the screen is brought up, you can hover over the the box and it lists the the instructors you've already put in. So you know if you're on instructor number 23 and then you're like, wait, have I put in Havlicek? You can hover over that box and and see if Havlicek is already in there or not. And then you could and put you, in. You'd always want to make sure Havlicek's included. Hey, I would. Oh, yeah. Let me ask a quick question. Sure. Let, so let's wake up people here. This is an afternoon session. Raise your hand if you've ever used a teacher was function in a report to query by instructor for uh, running names or registrations. Raise your hand and I'm not seeing, oh, there is one. All right. Uh, and a couple, super. All right, well, uh, bless you guys. Uh, you will enjoy this new feature, I think, a lot. And for the rest of you, remember, if you're needing to query a data by an instructor, teacher was is your secret uh, password for that. So not secret, but it's out there for you. All righty, Matthew, thanks. Yep. And um, so the OK on a blank entry, which it ha has always done, will continue to run the report. So if you're only putting in one name, and you're not putting in 24 more, um, just hit OK. And uh, on on that second box that comes up, which has nothing entered yet, just hit OK, and then it'll continue to run the function. So uh, names with registrations from the demographics area. We've added a couple more fields for you guys, uh, co-subcode and loc-locat. Locat was a bigger deal because before that there was nothing coming in from location. So now we've at least got that uh, coming in. Uh, so you can see that all from, from this report. So um, it, I know this will help at least one institution um, because they were doing add, add functions to get that to come in and it was slowing down the report. Well, they were running it for like 
thousands of names so i it made the report slow way way down so this cutting this out should should help them just pop that report right up so uh couples registrations this is a new module and you'll need to get with sharon on pricing because i uh, if sharon ever told me the price um uh, i did not notate it uh, but get with Sharon on pricing. I am going to demo that right now, uh, at least from the student manager aspect and uh, AceWeb, uh, I'm assuming Jason's going to demo that. But uh, from student read. manager, yep. Okay, so from student manager, uh, one of the, well, one thing is since this is a paid for module, your your technician will have to install it. Uh, but once it's installed, um doo -doo -doo, register so the couple fee and it looks like i don't have it installed on this demo um hold on ah let me pull this over here so you guys can't see what i'm doing uh, local list. Uh, well, while Matthew is setting up, I will tell you we do have a price for that. It is sixteen hundred ninety-five dollars. Uh, kind of our mid-range modules. Uh, we will probably be offering some kind of introductory discount price for that for people who would want to add it on to their system. Uh, PDQ, we are seeing your credential log on, Matthew. I assume you know yep. that, that that's, of course, your private password. So anyway, yep. uh, but it'll be $16.95. It'll be on the price list on AceWeb. And um, you should be able to, uh, we should be able to add that on. And I think it'll be a great add-on for you to be able to promote uh, partner registrations. And that's what you're going to be learning about here in just a second here so we can see you Matthew if you want to hide that all yep. right uh oh no I lost it damn it Matthew what'd you do well I was <laughs> shutting down my one thing yeah, and, no, and, and, and it um, first it, well it again first. I'm going to give you a back uh, if you go back to uh, remember the are you ready now ready ready Freddie I think I just need now. to log back in and um, whoops, that's my desktop. Matthew is doing remote desktop from home, so he's got too many computers to, to yeah. dance with. Um, on the. Uh, there. There you go. Now you're. And he doesn't have remember me turned on on that. So see, he logged had to log in again. So yeah, I could have turned it. I'll try that. Oh, okay. Let's... So edit preferences. New thing here. Yeah. Couple fee keyword. So if you don't like the word couple, you could use partner, uh, buddy, um, significant uh, other. <laughs> yeah, dynamic duo. I mean, whatever you want to call. Uh, have have it, it's got to be a word that is included in the fee to trigger this. and this also needs to be entered in ace web but um i'll let jason i'm stealing jason's thunder again um so now if i go to a course and you could do this from a membership i'm going to show it from a membership because uh that's how we initially uh thought about this so i'm going to go to my 21 ace club fees and I'm going to add a new fee description because I have I'm entering this like brand new. I just installed this feature. So couples, uh, couples fee, and save that. Okay. So now if I add a couple and do an amount of $15 because I'm. this is going to put in two people. Uh, hide on web, no. I'm going to do 122621 like the other one and we're going to assign Ace Club. 
And another thing you have to do is add another fee at zero dollars and it, it can be called whatever um, contract price I don't care zero dollars it's got to be hide from web just and it's to kind of clarify on that that the the other fee would be something like uh you know a partner couples dash partner uh it doesn't have to have the couples uh, name in it, but it does need to be kind of distinct so that the person getting the enrollment form is going to be able to tell what they're in, what they were enrolled in. So, right, and it does have to be the first free. If you've got multiple um, free, it needs to be the first free uh, listing as as this uh, what you want the second person to come in as. All right, so let me save that. Now let me add. Edit Reggie's and add, oh, who do we want? George Bush. George Bush is coming in with couples. Now, uh, hide from web would, would make the contract price not show on the web in, in student manager. It shows it, but uh, couples fee. And uh, right now, at this point, I can hit save, and it's going to ask me, hey, you've got a couple fee, but you haven't designated the partner yet. And I'll show you how it knows whether or not it, it has a partner. So it's asking, do I want to assign the partner now? Well, yeah, I want to do that. And um, let's see, his best friend is Brock. Okay, so Brock, wham bam just came right in and was the couple with george bush as you could tell do paid well i haven't put a payment in yet but do is zero for him because he came in at the contract price and i can now i could additional info shows me the partner is barack obama uh so if i do want to go look at barack's record uh Brock is grouped with, with George. He came in with the contract price of zero. So both Brock and George, and I can go look at uh, name info. Okay. Um, demographics. They got the Ace Club membership added to the name record in both cases. Um, so, well, we see Barack, I can go back to George and show you them, name info. Yeah, so both of them got that Ace Club membership. So now you can uh, uh, go and put them into memberships uh, at, like that. If, you, if this wasn't a membership, you know, it's just a regular registration that you're like dance classes. I mean, that'd be perfect, have a partner, uh, you know, you're you're registering yourself and your partner at the same time, and you get a designate, you know, a, a discounted rate for um, for both of you signing up, or maybe there's just one one set price per couple for the dance course. Um, so yeah, you can use this in all sorts of ways, uh, and like I said, it is going to be available on Ace Web, and Jason will show that. So any questions on that? Nope, we're good. You did a good job. Cool. Uh, summary, and I think I've said this at the beginning, may, get out there and update. Uh, lots and lots of bug fixes and um, uh, definitely some goodies. Uh, you do have to be updated to 98 uh, to get that the couples membership uh, installed uh, by your technician. Um, so you can get that step done, you know, even without your technician uh, before you purchase that that module, um, and then you're just one step closer to to purchasing that module if you if you do want it. Uh, any other things before I turn it over to Jason and Stein for their stuff? You're muted, Chuck. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, thank okay. you, Matthew. Um, Jason, uh, do you want to go next or do I turn this over yeah, to Yeah, go ahead and toss it my way. 
uh, coming up. Here you go. And we going once, going twice. We see you. There you go. Take it away. All right. So uh, we're going to do kind of a, a main feature spotlight for the 64 release. There's really one big feature that came with this. And as Matthew has kind of already alluded to, that is this new partner enrollment packaging. Um, we've kind of just recently given it this name, and that's still tentative, I think. But uh, couples membership partner package, whatever you want to call it, um, that is what we're going to talk about. So uh, what is it? Matthew has already kind of covered this, but basically on the ACE website, it's just a way for your registrants to enroll a partner or take a coupled discount in either a course or a membership course without having to go through the, the extra steps or hassle of using the existing proxy registration system. So you've already been able to do this sort of functionality on AceWeb, it's just taken a few extra steps in the past. So now this module is going to give them the ability to do that on the fly, you know, either register or create their partner's record um, or select from an existing one that they've registered in the past or that's a member of their family group and uh, just kind of do all that in one streamlined step. So let's take a look at what they see on the Ace website. So when you go to the course, and you select the enroll yourself option and i will say it does also function with the existing proxy registration system so if you have someone that wants to register their mom and dad for a dance class they can actually do that so they can log in as themselves choose enroll someone else and then continue this partner enrollment package process the same way if they were enrolling themselves and someone else um, but for this example, we're going to say they go to the course and they choose enroll yourself. If your course is set up uh, with the necessary fees and fee structures, then they're going to see uh, a few different options there. If they choose one of the options that is part of that package deal, that couples package or the partner package deal, the JavaScript that we're adding in this build is going to gray out the options that would normally be just for enrolling one person in the course. So it's going to essentially only highlight that one button that says save to the cart and select your partner. So when they choose that option, the next screen they're gonna see, uh, you may be familiar with, it's basically the proxy registration uh, suggestions. So um, depending on if they've enrolled someone else via proxy registration in the past, or if they have a family group, so they have other name records linked to their name record, they'll show those there as proxy suggestions or they can enter the email address and of course that'll trigger the system uh, to check for existing ones and say hey we have someone with that email address is it this person and then you can either say no it's actually someone else and let me create a new account so on and so forth that that process is is pretty much the same so once they select someone or they create a new record it's going to stick both of them on the cart and as matthew pointed out in the fee structure that first free fee is going to be what shows on both the uh, enrollment cart on the registration confirmation page the registration confirmation email so you want to make that um, partner fee something kind of clear uh, you could say included with package or included in price you know just name the fee that and that's what it's going to show up as on their confirmation pages yeah, I, I was just going to, I was thinking that with Matthew's just using contract fee as a uh, convenience, but for production, you probably want to pick, not yep. just pick the first convenient name, but pick something that will make sense in that context. Exactly. Okay, so in Student Manager, it's going to create a grouped registration with the the person who did the registration and their partner or if they're doing the proxy registration, the two people that comprise the partner group. The main record or the one doing the enrollment is gonna have the payment on it. And then the other person is going to have the included price. And you'll also see down there, it says you know who, was, who it was registered by. So whether that was the person doing the proxy registration of a couple, or if it was the uh, first partner in the group doing it, their name will be stamped there in the red text. So that is it in a nutshell. Um, 
Matthew's covered kind of all the student manager stuff, but uh, again, if you want to explore more about that module, get with Sharon or Susan and they can give you some details on the, the pricing and see if we've got some sort of a special deal. But I think this is gonna save a lot of people a lot of time, especially if you're running um, a lot of membership courses where there's, you know, couples dancing and, and classes where it's, you know, you're intended to bring someone. I know in our town here we have uh, this kind of paint and sip thing, and it's usually like a couples thing that you take someone with you. So um, the proxy registration process for that would be a lot trickier than just having one system where you can do it all at once. Okay, so we didn't exactly cover a whole lot of the release features from 63. 63 uh, was kind Jason, of a the, yes. Jason, we got a we got a couple questions on that. Sure. One you've answered about uh, where does the payment go, and you mentioned the payment goes on to the person who is buying, or uh, you know the couple's membership who initiated it. The other question was whether or not the partner e the the person who is the other partner of the person who's buying whether that fee needs to be zero and yes in our case it it does have to be zero that's how we designate so the idea would be you get to decide so right there the dancer couple fee uh, and and the included would be the 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 partner fee the partner e if you would the second person in this partner so if you yeah. want to raise the price on that couple's membership you would just go to the dancer couple and you you just bump that price up to whatever you want figuring that if you said well we want it to be 80 percent and so it would be 160 dollars for both and in essence that comes out to be 80 dollars per person but the person buying the couple's membership is basically you're you're doing like a group registration you're paying for both so um uh, ray i hope that explains the, the question if you and again, if you've got other questions about how it might work and you guys might have been trying to do couples memberships in uh, some other way, uh, you know, get with your tech and uh, they can either answer the question or show you how this can work in your case. Um, again, uh, back to uh, the price, it's going to be $16.95. Uh, we will be looking at some possible uh, uh, special deals and again as with all modules we offer that 90-day trial if you try it and if after 90 days you don't think it's really working for you we'll, we'll give you a refund or we'll hold off on the invoice on that so I believe that's it on questions on the okay. well, hold on we've got a well, couple I do want more. to uh while you're looking at that I want to show because Matthew you mentioned that you do also need to set that partner the keyword in your AceWeb INI, and that is a new INI entry called, you guessed it, partner fee key. So this is what's going to trigger that to recognize, okay, this is a, a partner fee, and so I'm going to consider that as the partner system, and then look for the first free key, or the first free fee to use as the kind of member included price. One last question, and I we haven't mentioned it. Do both people in the partnerette get a email confirmation? I think they do, don't they? Yes. Yeah. Similar It'll to be the, the uh, same way that similar to a group registration. Yeah. Yeah. So the answer is yes. Everybody in there gets a confirmation. Very good. All right, carry on. All right. Okay, so where was I? Ah, the the things from 63. Again, 63 was kind of a you know a critical release build that fixed some pretty nasty bugs that slipped through in 62. But uh, we'll do a quick recap. One thing um, Matthew did already kind of mention as well is this firm uh, employees being available as proxy candidates. So when you're doing the multi proxy. Um, you can now choose between the firm and personal contacts if you have that checkbox that says, I'm allowed to proxy register firm members on AceWeb. Um, so what, what will happen is they will see a, uh, a radial option at the top of that proxy suggestions page that says, show me my work contacts. And then they can click the show personal contacts to show people they've proxy registered in the past or again, family group members. All right, some of the other things, the um, email subject for that minimum enrollment met notification. So when that email goes out to instructors that um, 
triggers when the minimum course enrollment is met, the subject of that is now stamped to that instructor's CRM record. Also in the instructor front, we have made it so that the uh, instructor list for courses that have multiple instructors is now sorted by last name first, and you also have the ability to customize that with the function on the template. Another change that we've done is kind of more for the administration side, so your, your staff members, if you're tweaking the functions on templates, on your AW Viewer page, there is, there's always been this kind of box that says uh, SQL statement, and then underneath that there's a bunch of buttons. One of those is evaluate string expression, and what you can do is test out a, an ASWeb function before you change it on your live templates. You can stick it in there and click evaluate string expression, and it should either render or say, you know, okay, it, it ran into some sort of an error. So that'll save you a little bit of headaches with working in your live system if you don't have a test environment. All right, so that is all I've got from the 64 and then the 63 stuff. Was there any other questions before we turn this over to Stein to do some additional demonstration? Uh, nothing on that. So Stein, I will flip over to you here. You can, so, yeah, give me the screen. You're coming up. Here you go. Okay. Um, show my screen. Screen and, main monitor two. And nothing. And we see the Ace Web admin page. Okay. And um, these uh, um, just a couple items are um, for the uh, staff administration stuff. Uh, again, not not for your end users. These are for staff, uh, just to help uh, um, make Ace Web run a little more smoothly or find out what's been going on 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 the website. And we've always had a few options, log options over here under System Reports. Uh, that lets you look at a couple of log files. They've been kind of pretty primitive and uh, maybe not terribly useful. So we've tried to uh, charge them up a little bit to make them uh, uh, a little more usable. Uh, a couple of the minor ones, we do have a registration log. And uh, of course, any of these functions you do need to put in your student manager credentials. We don't, again, want the run-of-the-mill person looking at them. They shouldn't even be able to see that administration page if you've got it properly secured. But as a second level of security, you do have to log in with your student manager ID. And um, the registration law, we didn't do anything today, but let's go back for the last seven days. And uh, when you pick one of these options, then you click the refresh button and it goes back and it shows all the registrations that we've had um, in the last seven days. Uh, we had a couple on the third, a couple on the sixth. And so you can uh, see the registrations, the main fees and the optional fees that were involved. Uh, so you can just get a report there. Um, and basically, um, if you uh, uh, you know want a more customized, you know, uh, I want to just see what happened, what we got on the third. You could go over here and you know click it, click in the date, um, uh, and pick a, pick an exact uh, date scheme. So, so that's the registration log. The exception log is uh, again. Let's see what we had recently here. If we had any. Uh, okay, we had this will basically show uh, declined payments. So we had a card validation declined and another case where the user canceled it, it themselves. So again, if you want to get a sense of, hey, how many people are trying to pay and not getting it done, uh, this, this would give you a little report there. And then the one that uh, we did some the most work on is the enrollment card log. Uh, this is going to give you a picture of uh, just what all went on on the cart level. Uh, and that might include people who came on, put stuff on their cart, but then abandoned it without paying. Uh, so uh, we get a little more uh, 
sense of uh, you know maybe what was going on. And again, you have these various options, uh, what dates you want to do. You could do it, put in a custom date again. Uh, let's just go back and see again what we had in the last seven days. And uh, it shows you the course that they put on, the name of the student, uh, which fee they picked, uh, and the status here. If they just put it on the cart and never checked out, it will show up as abandoned. Now, hopefully your users aren't going to look just exactly like mine here. You'll see a lot of abandoned enters, entries here. That's because I do a lot of testing and I want to say, hey, does this go on the cart properly? Yeah, it's good. I don't go ahead and check out. I just dump it, you know, and go back and do other stuff. So uh, probably inordinate, inordinately high uh, a number of abandoned entries on this one, but you can get the idea of what it looks like. And I see it's cutting off the word registered. I'll have to maybe see if I can fix that up. Uh, and it does uh, also, you know, if you uh, need to contact the student, hey, Neil, why did you, uh, you know, I noticed you came down here and abandoned a bunch of entries. You can click the uh, um, live email button here. And uh, assuming you've got a, a web client or a email client set up, it'll just, uh, you know, uh, bring up an empty email for you to work with. So. Uh, let's see. So a couple of other things. If you only want to see, you'll notice that we're showing all of the uh, the main fees plus the various optional fees here. If you just want to look at the uh, main fees, you can do this. And uh, if we refresh that, we should get a, a slightly uh, uh, cleaner uh, screen here. Um, and if you only want to see hey, who's coming on here and uh, uh, going off and leaving uh, abandoned card entries? Are we getting a lot of people doing that? Maybe I want to try to figure out why that's going on. So you can only show abandoned card entries. And now, uh, in fact, it doesn't even show the status because you know all of these are abandoned. And uh, uh, so these are the, the entries that were abandoned. Uh, and without the main fees, we really get down to just these uh, five entries. Um, and then one other thing, and it's not going to show here because I don't have any current activity, but uh, let's go back to, uh, let's clear that out. Let's clear this out and uh, include current activity. Uh, again, I'm going to, oh, wait. Whoa. I shouldn't see all these. Okay, this was working once. Let's see, wait, current activity from today. Maybe let's go down. No, it shouldn't have shown those um, those old ones. The current activity are people that came on in the last hour. Uh, and the reason by default we're excluding those is because you're not really gonna get a fair picture of the people that are maybe actually live on your site right now uh, because their card entries are going to show as abandoned because they won't have checked out yet. So uh, it's again, you're just getting a uh, normally you're not going to want to see them, but there may be a case where you do want to see uh, who was uh, who's on right now. You know, let's see who's uh, uh, who are current uh, uh, people who are currently on here. Uh, let's see, wait, include current activity. Okay, I'm for today. All right, all right. I take it back. If you're going to show old, you know, the last seven days, but current activity, yes, you will see the last seven days. It isn't just current activity. Uh, but if you're going to go on today and get current activity, you'll see what happened today plus what went on in the last hour. So it isn't just only current activity. It's you know whatever uh, range you're picking plus that last uh, at last hour. And again, it's probably not something you're going to use very often. Uh, often and uh, 
I should have gone ahead and, and put somebody on the cart uh, uh, just to, to get it to show up. But uh, uh, right now, I have no activity on my site, so you're not getting anything here. Uh, then the other thing is the, uh, we go here and say we grab the last seven days. We have the export to Excel option. Okay, so you can, uh, if you want to see, hey, who we had the last seven days, and I want a more permanent record of that, you can click export to Excel. First, uh, I should point out, you want to make sure you have here what you want, refresh the page, so exactly what you want is showing, and then it will download your Excel file uh, automatically when you click the export. So I've got down here uh, in my downloads file the Excel option. If I open that, it should give me once ever Excel comes up. It's thinking about it. I okay. I'll pull it over here from this screen. Uh, I can't move it because, all right, here is the dialogue I get. I don't know how to work around this. Actually, Matthew, if you've got any ideas about how to avoid this, but when I export to Excel, the current version of Excel, the one I'm running anyway, doesn't like the format, uh, and it says format and extension don't match gives me all these dire warnings about it being corrupted. But if I say open it anyway. Stein, can you can you have it save as XSLX and try that? SXLX. Uh, I will try that, yes. I. What did I have there, an S? Just XLS. XLS. Which is the, the old like 97, Word 97. Uh, format extension. Um, I think the reason it was XLS is that was my attempt to try to get by this, but I'll go back to XLX SX and see if that helps. Uh, and guess what? I did not end up with a file here. So that may be the problem. Uh, so I should have uh, double checked this. Uh, but uh, definitely we'll make sure that works. Yeah, and that's uh, that, that's a, a new feature and that, that part can be enhanced as we go along. But yeah, uh, it, I, I do want to, while we're asking for questions here, no, nobody's popped up right now, but again, uh, we, we've gone almost a full hour, but I'm curious, there are a couple of keepers of the flame here. Has any, can you go back to the admin section of, uh, the ace web admin pages and and kind of hover down there under the view site activity those four items that stein had looked at has anybody ever gone in to download those or take a view of that that that's a lot of sleeper information that i think if you're an admin that you want to follow up and i think from a marketing point of view that idea of looking at abandoned cart issues is something that uh, we should probably um do some emphasis on as far as a feature that can help you with your uh you know web analysis to see if there's something going on funky with why if you're having an inordinate number of uh, abandoned cart issues so um okay. well Stein, I, anything else you want to share yeah, well, on that topic let's there we do have the view site page here for a, just a quick look of what's going on without all those details uh, Site activity summary, um, uh, the right. total hits. Uh, I did hit my site, but you can see I didn't put anything on the cart today, which is why we didn't get anything in those cart reports. Uh, and uh, you can go back, you get yesterday, the last seven days, and then it will go back to the last time that you did a cleanup and cleaned out all you know the various uh, uh, system logs which in my case was uh, the 30th of March. So uh, you do you can get a quick look here and, and, and you'll notice that if we go back here, we can see that in the last week, uh, 
we abandoned cart, uh, we had five abandoned cart entries. So that would give you just a, a quick snapshot of what might be going on. Again, you can specify a, a specific time period here. And um, um, so this is, uh, this is something for a quick look, and then you can use those other reports if you wanna drill down for more details. Very good, very good. Well, um, again, if you've got questions, go ahead, pop them up. Uh, Jason, anything else to add at this point? Nope, I think we covered everything. All right. Well, I want to before we send everybody before we send everybody back, I want to jump back to remind everybody that we've got the webinar coming up on the 15th. I want to get back to make myself the presenter here so that we've got the webinar coming up on the 15th, the second one on radical report functions and the boot camp still taking enrollments uh, the April 19th through the 22nd. So folks, a lot of ground to cover today. We thank you for joining us. Um, again, get that upgrade, uh, sign up for the webinars and uh, we'll see you next month. So have a good day, everybody. Thanks guys and ladies, bye-bye. All right.